hello all. <clears throat> Militia man, Kim Marie sharing this one. After 21 years of the dollar auction, Iraq's close to closing the window amid reassurances and warnings. Yeah, no, it is. Um, that is so important to where we are at. Not needing that, closing that, and of recent, they've been using it to pull in dinar off the streets to get rid of their dollars absolutely huge news all right hello miss kukla hello weezer trash dog take back carolyn vicky cynthia uh we'll get into that one jerry um on the bond side do not worry it was uh yeah i hope you all had an awesome day hello booger fred grumpy karen daily words savvy hello pink flamingo baja no, oh, no, I'm going to throw you off on that bond conversation. It is getting interesting. Hello, Jay and Amy. Hello, Jamie. Hello, S. Lucius. Hello, Mr. Stubbs with that super sticker. Just want to say thank you for that. Hello, Mouse Mitts. Hello, Ro, Carolyn. Say that again. I haven't said anything important yet. You haven't missed anything fun. It's just getting interesting on the back and forth, on the quiet, the dark. When I say dark, I mean those going like conversational blackouts. Uh, <laughs> case, uh, case staff, excuse me. <clears throat> case staff said, I was hurrying to catch your show and I hurt myself tripping over a Kleenex box. It's okay. It's a soft tissue injury. <laughs> Hello, Jenny Hayes. Hello, Scott Hendricks. Hello, A Light Within. Hello, MJ in Chicago. Hello, Cynthia. Car Wait, I think I already said hello, Carolyn. I do not believe it'll go on Friday. I think you're still a little premature. Could. Hello, Lake Michigan. I am. Hello, Tactical Soul Survivor. Hello, Arnold. Good to see you. I know I'm a little bit of a outlier on this one. Yay, Pickles. How's the wrist? Can you run with, uh, can you hold the scissors yet? Hello, Larry. Hello, Jim up in Beantown. Hello, Middle of Werno. Hello, Mikolo. Hello, Jay Henry. Yeah, G Bosley. It was funny. That was very funny. Uh, let's see. My husband, 63, ran off with a 29-year-old little girl. He ordered an online. We're online. Took most of the currency for the two of them. If I have some, I grab and sure could use. Uh, Cassie, I am so sorry. I am looking for. Holy crap, 6329. You're going to end up the winner in this one. Trust me. Hello, Carrie. Thank you for that super sticker. Like, what the hell are some people thinking? I know in my past I wasn't the man I should have been, but I was still a hell of a lot better man than that. Hello, Darlene. I got... Hello, Mr. Eford. Hello, Rob in Bristol, UK. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, we're, we're looking at this. Somebody just said Sudani needs to be back in his country before it goes. And I do believe that is the plan. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe right now. Well, Brian, I mentioned it this morning, so that makes sense. Did you see the soft disclosure of eating others by the recent Biden maneuver to feed Ukrainian soldiers, Russians? Wait, what? All right, I'm just going to leave that one right there. <laughs> Kevin, you just made my night. My purple dinosaur bonds are getting some action on Craigslist. Let me guess. Are they called Barney Bonds? Because that's what I would call them if I were looking for some purple dinosaur bonds. I call them Barney Bonds. 
Uh, Mary, I highly doubt the Gazette will pu publish a rate tomorrow. I just do not think it's time yet. I think we are close, but I am not looking for it yet. I do. I personally think the earliest we could see it's the 22nd or 23rd. Uh, but I know I'm an outlier right now. I totally understand that. Hello, Lady Rebel. Uh, Nancy is asking, saying, please say a prayer for my 18-year-old granddaughter who has Eller danlos syndrome. She's having her gallbladder taken out tomorrow from having gallstones. Nancy, we have some tremendous prayer warriors here. So please, uh, my prayer warriors, reach out <coughs> and say your prayers. Fishing today. Um, I said for my bond conversations, guys, most of my bond conversations have been with appointments for final contracts and payments between starting somewhere around the 15th. I've not seen any yet that I can verify. Uh, most of them have been scheduled between the 15th and 22nd. And it's my understanding we need at least a third to a half of all the historic bonds paid volume wise, money wise before it goes. So my logical mind is just telling me that that is the soonest we could see something. I could be wrong, guys. It could absolutely go within the next two minutes and it would not surprise me. But that's just what my logical mind says right now. Hello, Arnold. Honestly, what has to happen, we're screaming along so quickly now that I could blink and it could go, Peace Finder, thank you. Trash Panda, you are fashionably late. Virginia Gal, so how many of the bondholders do you know? I know probably three of the top five groups. Um, so I would I would make the argument that I know enough to know if it's gone. And while I do have some interesting occurrences with that, just stay grounded, guys. Try to stay grounded. I know we're on a roller coaster right now. Um, I want to know why you think, okay, Chrissy, I just shared that one. And yes, I've said it over and over. I've been saying it for the last like three weeks and I don't think anybody's paying attention to me. And I'm with Sean on this one. Why would Sudani not want to take credit in his own country? I don't think it'll go until he's back. You know, Sean, I originally thought that it was going to be Sudani doing it and then coming to the U.S. until I started getting the updates from some of my um, acquaintances, friends, some of them friends in real life that are bondholders. And then I started hearing the dates they have been sharing or being told. And that's when it made more sense to me for Sudani to be here to dot I's, cross T's before he goes home. Uh, but I cannot imagine him not wanting to be in country for it. Mark Jameson, we're talking about bond groups. And I am totally not going to uh, mention their names. Yeah, I do not know when Sudan is supposed to go back. Um, I believe it is around the 17th, but I do not know for certain. It's coming fast and hard. I'm glad I didn't do any ads tonight. Sean, thank you. Ha, Jackie, you're smart. Don't get excited until I put on the mankini. A digital soldier, this is something that you do not need to worry about. Uh, when I listen to the rumors that I'm in Brazil to exchange, I mean, that's just effing stupid. I mean, I can't even come up with a better way to describe how effing stupid that thought is, did Brazil send soldiers to the liberation of the Ukraine? Why would I be here to exchange? That has got to be the god-awful dumbest comment I've ever seen spread around the, the web, just from a logical perspective. Don't even take all the whatever somebody told me, so I believe it or whatever. Just take the logic, the thinking out of that one. Um, we're told that the countries that sent dollars, troops, et cetera, we get a preference or a preferable rate um, in the dinar for oil, oil for dinar um, scenario, and Brazil is not one of those. Why would I come here to exchange for less than staying in the U.S. 
for that. It just right over my head. Huh. Um, I have an NDA from an SKR I did many, many years ago. It has not paid. There's nothing. I've not received any dollars. I'm not going to get them before you guys. Not going to go before you guys. Matter of fact, I have turned down dollars so I could stay with you all. Zester is doing great. He is loving the food. He is caught up on more sleep than I have. Of course, I say that about the dollars in Brazil, but Telegram is going to twist everything sideways. Can we just like shoot Telegram, close it down, make it never happen again? And I know many of you guys like it. It has just become such a cesspool of disinformation. I love this one, Cheryl. Right side broadcasting network is showing President Trump visiting Harlem right now. The crowds are off the charts and they're all chaining four more years. I love it. Oh, no, I've not seen the Civil War movie, but I want to. All right, news. Oh, it is 7-Eleven. It is time for the lack of news or some interesting lack of news. And I think that is important as well. Really? Where are my banners? My banners, my news banner has, ah, it has reappeared. It was hiding. Uh, news time. Bond folks, straight to voicemail. So I reached out to a couple of other Bond contacts, straight to voicemail. So then I started reaching out to some group leaders I know. Um, one used the term blackout. Another used the term, well, not even the term, just the phrase, hey, I cannot share. We are close. So we have clearly had some contact with a few of the groups that I am associated with. When I say groups, aggregating currency. These are currency. So I'm getting straight to voicemail from bond contact. I've reached out to another one that doesn't have their appointment until tomorrow. Another one that has their appointment on Thursday. Uh, their appointment is still on. It has not been changed. The one that I had an appointment today, gone. MIA, I am ghosted. Um, I hope that means something positive. The group leaders that I have in uh, many groups, they are under a blackout, meaning they will not share. I'm going to take that as very, very good sign. Uh, other than that, very quiet. I mean, we know that Sudani is traveling all over the U.S. We know that people are positioning. It's been very quiet with Iraqi news. Um, I shared some this morning that we've gotten over the last couple of days, but nothing like earth shattering. All of it coming together to me is important. I'm with you. It's kind of a mic drop right now with the news we're getting. Oki Bob. Hi, Mark. Get yourself a trout. Oh, Oki Bob. I appreciate that. When I found one at this place called Franz Cafe, which is just down the street, not even a block. And I will probably do just that. Let me uh, make certain I say proper thank yous. Carrie Summers, thank you. Peace Finder, thank you. Triple B. Triple, thank you. And of course, Chrissy G. <laughs> Chrissy, you never have to apologize. You have, you have over the year or two or whatever become a favorite. Very nice. Exceptionally nice. Let's see. I've gotten dozens of cures from Telegram. Most people don't know how to use it. When the truth comes out, YouTube has in their hidden channels, you're all going to throw it. Hey, look, I do not question that that Telegram has some fantastic channels and some fantastic people. My concern with it are, is the number of trolls that are using it and the government using it to spread disinformation. That's my problem with it. That, okay, even with that aside, it's probably the middle school mentality of so many of the people on it. Not you guys, just many. Reading a few of these, I did not grab a bottle of water. I'm going to be suffering soon. Sorry for getting the room open late, guys. I prepared everything early and went to Trace Amigos and had a quick bite of Mexican right before this. Please enlighten me about what we'd be exchanging for what bikillion dollars. Oh, yeah, Tina, they're totally dropping zeros. 
Uh, anybody, yeah. We're not going to pay Mark from North Carolina a quadrillion dollars. It's not going to happen, especially not when you stop and you do the math and we look at a reset to a standard where your dollars are worth more. I mean, you would have to go so far into inflation to be able to justify that. You you would break the world. I mean, you would shatter the world. Yeah, it's not going to do any good to tell anybody that, though. At all. <laughs> Close, get the wax job. Yeah, but Greg, what happens if I go get the wax job today? And it doesn't happen for four or five days or a week. I've already been waxed. I'm going to get some really ugly bumps. You know, kind of the razor rash. I mean, I've heard about this. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, experienced it firsthand. But I'd be a little worried about getting waxed too soon. Because i got to look good for the, uh, for the deb debut of the mankini. Pickles, good to see you. Right, Kukla? Ouch. See, Makita, not from personal experience. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Roy Hobbs, you are correct. I would still feel it. Waxed or whacked. I'm just. <laughs> yes, Zester is planning on having a podcast tomorrow. Oh, God, you guys are great. Ah, Jesus believer. Look, I'm, I do not, I don't. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys make me blush often. Jesus believer from experience. You don't get bumps after a wax job. The hair just grows in fine, like new baby hair. Hello, Jay Hart. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm with, I am with, uh, where did I catch, catch that one? Be easy, I'm with you. <laughs> TZ, they beat you to it. <coughs> oh, I may have to back up and grab a bottle of water out of the fridge. <laughs> Patty, hey, look, the mankini would probably fit Zester. I doubt it's going to fit me. Can I point out how much healthier people are here than back in the States? I've seen one chubby person, and that is the fattest they've been yet. Dowsing Dr. 97. That is awesome. <laughs> Vicky, my uh, face matched my nose. I got a lot of sun in Nashville, guys. I got a little bit red. No burn, but a little red. Cool roll. I'm just dying. You guys, I love every one of you. Wax on. Wax on. Wax off. Yes, yeah, I can't tell. I mean, like in the mirror, it's not sunburn, but I did have one margarita at the Mexican restaurant, so that could be it. Um, Cassie, I still have great hopes for Medbed release. JC, I like it. Wax on rip. Make you, you guys, I, all right, I need to get back to it. She said, says it look like Rudolph. That's it. It's just light. Yeah, I look in the mirror here. I look fine. It's the camera. That's it. I'm turning the camera off here. Let's do the rest of the podcast like this. Hello, Clara. Hello, Skyline. <laughs> Uh, Secret identity. I've not seen a Holiday Inn in Brazil. I'm certain they have them. I've just not seen one anywhere close. Rip it. Rip, oh, that's it. Land Shark said, I'm ready for the RV. I just got mine. News banner down. Let's take it down. Let's get to it. We have some very interesting political maneuvering going on today. <laughs> uh, Andy's people are prepared, Shan. You, unfortunately, you can't lock in a price early. You can't lock in an order early. It's just not the way the industry works. H. Redhawk um, said, hope you enjoy Sao Paulo. Used to work there. 
we are so spoiled in the U.S. and they tell us about the crime rates around the world. Sao Paulo is my experience. I've not looked this one up is exponentially safer than what we're used to in most of our neighborhoods in the U.S. I have been blown away by how helpful and nice, even with a language barrier, because this isn't one of those where 20% speak English. You might get three or four out of 100 that have some English. Um, it is very unusual, uh, but they all, I mean, I've been really stunned how many of love America and they talk about it when they find out you're American. Uh, and so much of the music here is American music. They listen to it, even though they don't understand it. They just like it. I was expecting reggaeton. I was expecting very Hispanic music and it is, or ish, it is none of that at all. And the people are way healthier. I've seen like two or three chubby people. I've yet to see a fat person. And there are gyms like three on every block. Uh, supplement shops, three on every block. Stunned. They are very health conscious here. Knights Town Road. I didn't see about a loss, but uh, prayers are with you. I'm trying to catch up with some of the comments, guys. Let's see. You mean the citizens aren't sitting in highways, blocking major streets and highways while supporting reported terrorists? No, Roy Hobbs, this is not America. I, I have emailed back and forth with Phil. Nothing for you guys to worry about at all. You're not missing out on anything, etc. Trash and I'm fluffy. Uh, Patriot Graham, Brazil has real food, not overly processed food. Looking forward to having that again in the U.S. Oh man, they do. I have been I have been pleasantly surprised with the food, and it is hello Anani Mouse, hello Xavier. Just trying to keep up. All right, let's get to it. No fructose, hot corn syrup. No, they they very much. Uh, they're very picky about the food here. And kind of like that. All right, let's get to uh, what we do have news-wise, guys. Um, pretty quiet. I already shared. I didn't put up. Well, I did put up a news banner. Um, very interesting. The combination of quiet and chatter has been very interesting. Hope hammered. As Empire Fed plunged in April below all estimates, we're showing a number of consecutive poor months. Um, Elaine, you are very welcome. I have very much enjoyed um, Zero Hedge's coverage. It is reassuring to see somebody or a publication grounded in Austrian or real world economics, the economics of the working class, the economics of reality. Um, they do a great breakdown here, guys. If you want to see what's really going on in our economy, they have been top-notch. Going to suggest it, going to scream past it, because there are some things that are going to be more important to many of you guys. Uh, most of you all, you just glaze over when we start talking about politics and charts. I understand it. You're just like, hey, give me the money. Tell me we're free, and we can say what we like to say. I get that. understand it. Biden refuses to testify in GOP impeachment inquiry. This breaking today. He refuses. It's a sham. He will not be testifying to the U.S. House of Representative members who are engaged in impeachment inquiry against them, the White House said yesterday. Richard Sauber, special counsel of the president, told House Oversight Chairman James Comer that the president would not testify in the partisan charade. Wow. So. It is not a partisan charade if the Democrats do it, but it's a partisan charade if the Republicans do it. The hypocrisy of said statement is deafening to the White House. That they cannot see it is stunning. Sure, it's partisan. Just like it's partisan when you keep going after Trump. Except for there's some actual evidence that the Republicans have with Joe Biden. Actually, there's some damning evidence and receipts. 
testimony, etc. in this one, which makes it to me far less partisan and far more important. Less made up like the Russian collusion thing, which has been proven over and over to be a charade and partisan. And I would like to point out, the more we see them go after Trump in an attempt to discredit him, doesn't discredit him, it discredits them. They are showing that they are clearly willing to engineer the law to suit it. Now, I'm not going to claim that Trump's a saint. I'm not going to do it because I don't think he's a saint. Do I think he's the right person at the right time? Yes, I do. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I don't think anybody should have received that saint-like status except for my mother, maybe my sisters, and Jesus. Uh, and, of course, Jesus, number one on that front. But there are, to me, very few people that in this world that are without sin and worth holding on a pedestal. Um, there are very many people worth respecting and understanding. But just so you know my take on that, when nobody gets a free pass in my world, um, I, just, I just don't go there. I think we should all be critical. Not, I shouldn't say critical. We should be critical but understanding. We should understand that all people are human and we will make mistakes. Uh, Benjamin, I'm just sorry, guys. I got distracted reading what you all have to say. Bam, S. Lucius. Why do we forget there? Why do we? I mean, why do we forget that? Why do we not get? Why do we forget that? S. Lucius. We are all sinners saved by grace. God does not expect us to be perfect and without sin. He expects us to have sin. That is why He sent His Son to die for us because He knew that with free choice, with free will. We would sin and mess up. He gave us not an owl, not a cop. He gave us a way. He gave us a parent, a father's perfect love to still achieve. Are your kids perfect? Mine are not perfect, but they're perfect to me. And that is how, that's how God, that's how he looks at it. He does not expect you to be perfect. He knows he made you and does not expect you to be. All right, I'm going to start crying. But yeah, no, tears of love that God loves us that much. All right, I know. I'm not I'm not getting it across quite as clearly as I do sometimes. We'll blame the tired and the one margarita. Yeah, he's never claimed to be a saint. And I think I think we do him a disservice by putting him on a pedestal like that. All right, let's get back to it. All right. We talked about Biden not testifying, which is not a surprise to any of us. All right. Now, this is one I wanted to cover this morning, but we had so many things to cover this morning that I did not get to it. GOP leaders in Pennsylvania embrace mail-in voting and drop boxes. This is part of why I find myself drifting further and further away from the mainstream GOP political party and more and more towards I don't know. What do you guys want to call it? The constitutional, Jesus-loving American patriots. Uh, that's what I'll call it. Or should I say the, let's just leave it, Jesus, God-loving constitutional party. Can, can we make like some kind of terminology for that? You guys create that. This is part of what has upset me so much when I see the leadership around the country, or should I say the absolute dirge, lack of leadership around the country. We have not enough people willing to stand up and say, this is what I believe and this is why I believe it. Right, wrong, and different. We do not have enough people that have the conviction to say this is what they believe. They're all too busy trying to soften it for public opinion, which to me is just weak. That's how you end up letting the tail wag the dog. All right, now let's fast forward to Maine. And I know I should have been showing some of the articles, but I'll show you this one. I say I'll show it takes a minute with this system. Speaking of which, the people of Maine, are you not just ticked off? I would be ticked off. Maine is a small state. It is not a populous state. 
Maine governor allows national popular vote legislation to become law, meaning Maine is going to and <clears throat> veto, agree, disagree. The Maine governor didn't do any of that. It's a table approval. It doesn't work like a table veto where if they don't endorse it after so many days, it just becomes um, vetoed. It works backwards in Maine. If they do not come out and say no, it becomes law. So the Maine governor chose not doing anything to force it to become law. National popular vote legislation to become law. I want you to think about this for Maine. If you're a citizen of Maine, you should be shaking mad. You should be shaking mad at every one of your representatives that put forth that law. Smaller population states, smaller states, the power you have that is slightly outsized comes from the Electoral College because you're two senators. And the votes or electoral votes you get to offset the large population centers, you just capitulate to whatever. Whatever the popular vote is, Maine now agrees with, and that's where their Electoral College votes go. Your vote in Maine is shit. It doesn't matter. It is as important as the vote in Puerto Rico, which doesn't mean crap. If you are a citizen of Maine, you should be so upset with your politicians, with your legislator and your governor right now. You have no vote. Whatever the country wants, whatever the population centers want, that is going to bite you in the butt. It is going to bite you repeatedly, and I hope that your legislators fix it. I have been blown away learning and researching that one. Jipper, just wait. Let me see if I can find it. And they're not the only one. Well, D.C. doesn't really have a vote, but they've agreed to the same thing. <clears throat> yep, Jipper, exactly. Blown away by that one. Adobe, Dobby, Dobby has an excellent point here, a very excellent point. Remember, they are doing this under the corporate constitution of 1871, not the organic yet. We, I have to remind myself of this often when I look at what is going on, I look at the legislation passed, the executive orders, and I have to remind myself that constitutionally, common law speaking, it's going to get wiped away because I do. I need jerk react and I'm upset. So thank you for pointing that one out. You know, dousing doctor, I love that one. I'm starting a social group for elder orphans probably next year. It might be in the form of me. Yeah, I love that idea, dousing doctor, because so many so many elders have become orphans from their family views or don't have children. Trad Tiger, you got it. Why would they even vote? Why do you vote in Maine? Your vote doesn't matter. It has absolutely no effect on how your electoral college votes are going to go. Now, your local election, sure. But presidentially, meh. I bet, I bet voter turnout plummets in presidential elections. Reading some of that. Yeah, don't waste the gas. Yep, no point in Maine. See, I love it. You guys get it. You understand it. You understand the unintended consequences. All right, WTI rally stalls on crude build. White House hints at SPR release. These are all going to be uploaded to links. It is very much worth reading them. Dollar and yields soar as Fed fears Trump World War III worries. The Biden administration is scrambling. Inflation has gone up in order to cut inflation, which is what they did before the 2022 midterm. They spent months releasing strategic petroleum reserves or the strategic political reserves to lower those costs to make inflation look lower. As soon as those costs changed, we started seeing an increase in the inflation rate again. That's because it wasn't held artificially low by reducing energy costs. We already have released a dangerous amount of our strategic petroleum reserves. The Biden administration is eyeing, considering, and if this news is hitting us in mainstream media, that means they've already decided. They've decided when the war, when the world is on the brink, 
if not already in the beginning stages of World War III, they want to release more of the strategic, strategic petroleum reserve on the cheap, on the discount to the world in hopes of getting more voters going into 2024, into this election cycle. The irresponsibility of that decision is dumbfounding. But this is what this current administration, and this is probably what they want. If you're looking for the defeat of America on a world stage, this is a great way to do it. The economy, the wartime economy, the government, the military, the Pentagon, the Army, Navy, yeah, pick one, won't have the gas to run. And this is what they're considering in hopes of getting more votes. The irresponsibility of this. And, you know, I'm actually going to make a point to watch mainstream media over the next few days to see if they will even talk about, cover it, or discuss it. If you are American, if you are an American ally, you should be melting down with that news and that statement and those. Anyways, you should be melting down. It is irresponsible to a very dangerous degree for your safety. Yeah. <clears throat> Bert, good to see you. All by design, MB. Yes, it is. All by design. All right. Now, the last one I'm going to share with you guys this evening, and I did. I went further than I thought I would. See if I can get it up here. And this is one that I just, I hope more of you guys will take the time to read because he has been so absolutely painfully on it, uh, well, for years, but especially right now. Victor Dave uh, Davis Hansen, don't, or 10 ways to guarantee a theater-wide war. Really, really solid piece in the American Partisan. Uh, by by uh, Victor. He is just, I mean, when you talk about just common sense on it, and he just, he just breaks it down in a very understandable way. And I have loved it. I have loved, I mean, one, I've always appreciated his work, his intellect, his thought, him, Thomas Sowell, becoming a Jeffrey Tucker fan. Um, well, I shouldn't even say becoming. I am a Jeffrey Tucker fan now too. Jeffrey writes it. Um, well, a number of publications, but you see them mostly on Epoch Times, uh, a couple of other publications he writes for, um, Brownstone Institute. Some of these folks are just so tuned in to where we're really at in the world. It's reassuring to know that other people are awake. Hello, Amanda. Prayers, 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 guys. Jill, I'm not convinced that the White Hats don't have the biggest pair ever, and they make some what I consider painful decisions for us that make logical sense. They just, they hurt emotionally. Let's see, Twitch. My grandfather won a congressional medal for oil and gas production during World War II. If we need to, we can ramp up again. Texas will lead the way. Twitch, they're over 1,200 1,200 mothballed wells in from Quaker State, most of them in the Pennsylvania region, anywhere from southwest uh, New York down to some of them even in northwest uh, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky. Massive amounts. I can't even tell you the thousands of wells they capped off after the crash of the peso in Mexico. We could ramp it up quickly. We do not have the refineries, though. Ted Helper, Zester and I really are making some good memories. Not that we've had much time in the last day or two, but we've taken an hour or two each afternoon to go see things. Well, to find local stuff, find food, replace things we didn't think to bring. Uh, Tex Edgy, must watch The Last Judge Napolitano, Judging Freedom. I need to. Hello, Elvis. Elvis is in the house. Elvis is in the house. Good to see you, Elvis. Dr. Donna, I love this one. One of my humanitarian projects is a home for elder orphans who just need a loving place to stay. I love that. I mean, I can't, I mean, 
Dr. Donna, you're going to make me tear up thinking about it. I love old people. They've forgotten more than I will ever know, and I love that about them. Let's see, middle aware of everything the Q has stated has come to pass. Sorry to those communists back to MSM, even Epic Epoch. See who truly owns these. It's fun, yeah. Uh, why do you think Sudani's talking with Biden? Because he has to. It's To me, it's all optics. Um, just keep in mind that he's spending an hour or two with Biden. Theoretically, the most important man in the free world. Theoretically, I do not believe that. But he could spend so much time everywhere. How much time does he spend in D.C.? What hour, two hours, maybe the rest of the time is spent everywhere else? I would not read too much into Sudani meeting with Biden. I would read a lot into the very limited, limited amount of time that Sudani set aside for Biden. That to me would be very important. Or, all right, let's spin it the other way. Let's say Sudani wanted days, days with Biden. Biden can only stay coherent enough to meet for an hour or two with Sudani. Yeah, I would not read anything into that limited amount of time that doesn't need to be. Oh, wait, wait, Twitch. My son is in his last year of petroleum engineering at Texas Tech. We are doing our part. Don't forget about the Permian Basin. You have refineries, oh, or the Elks. Yeah, that may not make much sense to you. The different layers um, throughout uh, the Appalachians into the Alleghenies. Yeah, no, we, we're good on that one. We just need refineries on the fly. Trash Panda. This is exactly what I think they're doing. Um, and I'm pretty certain Trash Panda is referring to the White Hats. I think they are making decisions and have removed the emotional element. Probably the only way to get it done. I'll have to agree with you, Trash Panda. It hurts me from a human side because I tend to wear my emotions on my sleeve. I know that seems strange for people that know me personally because I often seem unemotional or very logical and I understand things. Doesn't mean I don't feel it, just means I understand it, understand some of those decisions. I just also know a lot of people are, are going to hurt that don't need to hurt, but I also understand it's logical and methodical and probably necessary. Great way to put it. Great way to put it. Hello, Deborah. Bobby Leia lived in the oil and gas bust of 82. Oh, man, it devastated so many. Kai Chan. Uh, yeah, I still expect the uh, dinar to be over that. When's it going to happen? We don't know for certain. I think it's happening in the month of April. Um, but I've been very, very, very wrong. Kukla, you're emotional. I am, I'm feeling Kukla. I am feeling the pressure from so many that are losing hope when I think they should be gaining hope so i'm just i'm i'm carrying a lot of you guys on me right now i feel it when you feel it i do and i also know i can't change it but i want to change it and i think if we start focusing on fixing things and what we can do it'll be easier jesus believer it is you get it. You guys get it. You understand it. Lumbago. Um, I've been traveling, so I've not had a chance to li uh, line up Sheila, but I will see if she can squeeze in. I was going to lean on uh, MM Militiaman to join as well. Carry some of the load because my work schedule has been so disrupted. And it will be even more later in this week as more of the crew, the people start arriving for this event. I will start having more demands on my time. Uh, tomorrow is probably our last really hard full day with all of our podcasts. So I'll be here in the morning. <laughs> JD 4R, that's too funny. Love that one. 
Chu Man, I've noticed that too. Cargo Bob, good to see you in the house. Uh, it is my understanding, uh, Dr. Scott's talked about this, Mr. C's talked about this, Louis, uh, Luis, or Lu yeah, uh, when the Sarah happens, will our medical bills disappear as well? It is our understanding, yes, they will. Frank, 20 years, heck, 30 years, um, it seems, Frank, uh, turmoil, but yeah, all right, let's just run with it, 22 years. Too many tears in Iraq. Yeah, the Iraqi people have suffered more than us. And I know we feel like we've suffered and suffered and suffered, suffered but Rocky, thank you. 7-2-Z. See, the problem is we misunderstand the word family. I feel like most of my family has abandoned me, most of your genetic family, but we're your family. We got you. Uh, yes, because of all the traveling, Charlie was limping, um, knee, hip, bothering him, son, but he, uh, his health is exponentially better than it has been. He is really, really doing well. Eating well has not, not had any alcohol in what, seven or eight months. I forget the exact time since his health crisis. No, Charlie's doing great health wise. Um, really, really coming along well. It was uh, it was nice. It was also nice because my son, Zach Zester, has not met him in person and got an opportunity to meet him, carry on with him. Um, they got along great. Got along great. Mr. Can too. Keep the faith. To lose focus on your faith gives the enemy a path to your positive energy. Amen, Mr. Can too. Amen, sir. Don't give them the crack. Leslie K, we get it. A lot of us in there. Just reading some of these. All right, you guys are great. Let's call it a wrap. Went way longer than I thought it would. I will be back in the morning looking forward to it. Um, very much. I would like to say that this travel and sitting go Titan. Yes, I do. Also feel like Charlie's been put in a difficult position with much of what he knows. But I do think he knows uh, more. And also, well, all right, there's some conversations that I'm not allowed to share or shouldn't share responsibly. But uh, yes, a lot going on there. There's going to be a lot to unpack when this is done. Most of it in a very positive light. Mr. Cantu, love you, brother. Daniel, Daniel, it's good to see you. I'm looking forward to making some meals with you. It's a wrap. Pickles, see, just so much love. I love it. Oh, no, Penny, tornado near you. I saw that. All right, I just got to leave it. Yeah, I hate secrets too. Oh, man, I had some great David Robert Steele conversations over the weekend. Cat B gets it. Or should I say Robert David? Did I say David Robert? Did I say Robert, Robert David Steele conversations over the weekend? All right, guys. Love you. See you for breakfast. Excuse me, coffee. And I'm going to go find a coffee mug somewhere in the morning. So if I'm a minute or two late, it's because coffee. Dag on it. Coffee. Thanks, guys. See you in the morning. Did I miss anything? Let me make sure. Oh, I did miss mentioning one thing. As we look at this, we look at the proxy wars, the terrorism, the Hezbollahs, the Hamases, the everything. I would just like to back up and remind everybody that the Biden administration has given nearly as much money to Iran since they've gone into office as they did to Israel and, excuse me, to the Ukraine. Biden's 90 billion bailout to Tehran. Guys, when I tell you this, I want you to remember because Donald Trump called this. I called this. Many of us called this. April 28th, 2021 is when the Biden administration released $90 billion of Iranian frozen funds to Iran. Since then, billions more. 
All because John Kerry, John Kerry's family. Oh, no, no, no. We love Iran. You want us to work with us. We're not going to develop. We're not going to, hey, we're going to pay you, not fund terrorist groups. How did that work? How did that work out? All right. Now I'm out of here. I just wanted to throw that like little jab at the end. Bye, guys.